What's going on guys? So this has been an all day affair. I had this suggested to me a lot a long time ago because uh, I use that pigment binder and it's basically just a watered down Elmer's glue. So um, back a couple weeks ago, my buddy Jeremy at Big Squid, he was redoing his farm truck too and he the color was still so bright. So I suggested this. I haven't tried it. He went with it and uh, it turned out fantastic on his truck. I think it did exactly what it, he needed. He had rust spots all over and it dulled down the uh, bright blue paint on his truck. So seeing how it worked out on his, I figured I'd give it a shot. I uh, think mine's a little too thick, but we made it work. Um, it's just finding the right combination. He spent a lot of time mixing and trying on little spots, mixing the glue and water. Just regular old Elmer's glue. Um, I, I guess I, I think I, somebody said, recommended that to me was a, saying that was a model railroad trick for a, a dull coat. So I tried it on the C10 first. It didn't really do much on the, I just did the hoods. I did this hood and that hood and um, didn't really do much of nothing on that. That truck's got a whole different setup on it. So I figured this truck, I, I did the hood, it dulled it down good, figured go ahead and just tackle the whole thing, give it a shot. Um, you know, it, you ever get Elmer's glue on your finger as a kid in a uh, grade school and it crusts over and makes a, you know, it's like pill and sunburn. <laughs> so that's in essence what we've done with this. How well will it hold up? I don't know. We'll find out. We're about to go to USTE. And um, yeah, this is going to be my main driver. Uh, if my bumper stays on. <laughs> I bought this truck used, so one of the bumper mounts was uh, broken. And I'm not going to try to patina match a different bumper right now. Plus, we put this nice unit on there a couple videos ago. So I think it came out pretty good. We can see... Um, it's a little thick, I think. I, again, I think I needed a little more water with my mixture. Um, Jeremy said in some areas when it got it got streaks and stuff, he was dabbing it, so I ended up dabbing the whole thing. It just looks filthy. Um, probably could have done it a lot cleaner. Um, I actually have some in the vents up here I need to knock out with uh, a little flathead screwdriver. It crusted up in there a little bit. That may not be small enough to do that. Nope, we'll have to get something even finer. Try this exacto blade. Just knock it. That may be too big too. So yeah, it's a, a lot of uh, trial and error. I don't recommend doing it to your entire vehicle the first go. I was feeling froggy and uh, went with it. But I think it came out pretty good. I mean, this truck has already beat the snot. It's been repainted and uh, it hid a lot of the, the there was another, this was, I guess used to be red with some two-tone and there was a lot of damage that just got painted over. Um, it is what it is. It looks like an old beater truck, but everything's pretty well dry now. And uh, I think it, it worked out pretty well. I like the, uh, the duller effect. Um, looking back, I wish I'd have just done my pigment binder because it's already the perfect blend of glue and water. But yeah, looks pretty good. So a couple things not to do if you try this. Um, don't dab your vehicle off the wet glue with a dirty towel that you use to patina everything else that you've weathered. Uh, use something clean. You can see I, I went ahead and did the top because the top on this was very shiny white and I just wanted to tone it down a little bit. So we've got some streaks of stuff up top. Um, just the black pigment that was all over my <laughs> pigment or my towel I used. But um, yeah. It's hard to come back over. I, I accidentally, when I started doing the whole truck, I overlapped the hood. So now there's a little bit of a mess here. So uh, I'd say do it all in one felt swoop. Don't try to do a section at a time because you will overlap and it will cause issues. You can see it toned down the chrome a whole lot. Um, I went over everything except the glass. I didn't go over the glass. Didn't know what that would do. Didn't want to find out the hard way. <laughs> But I went over all the marker lights. Um, I didn't go over the entire grill and bumper. I just kind of hit spots, trying to make it as splotchy as possible on the chrome. And it just came out looking really dirty. See here on the back, I did most of the rear bumper. And it, this, again, this was a well-used truck. It's already scratched up. And uh, it came out pretty good. It was a little bit hard to see uh, some of the spots, like down the bottom here in the shadows. But just tilting it up, I didn't miss too much. But that was a good guinea pig for the test. But like I mentioned before, this is just kind of my beater truck. It's not going to win any trophies. Not 
entering it in anything. Just going to be out there driving with it, having a good time out at USTE. The only thing it's missing, looking at it from the side like this on camera, we've got the brush guard now with the KC lights, which one is already loose. <laughs> I need a spare tire carrier and not just like a spare tire mount on the tailgate. I need an actual spare tire carrier. So I don't know how to go about that. I have to find some 3D printed option for that. I think that would look pretty good. Um, it reminds me of one I've seen before. I, it's hard to remember back in the early 90s when I was a little bitty kid and <laughs> seeing these things, but we actually were, we were pretty poor growing up, but we bought a, a car back in the early 90s. I think it was like Volkswagen Fox. It was our first newish car and it was terrible. It broke down the minute we bought it. So uh, my dad's boss gave us, a, I think it was an 89 or a 90 diesel K5 Blazer to drive. And uh, we drove that for a couple months while that car was in the shop. And uh, I had a lot of fond memories in the back of that. And plus, too, being a little kid, we'd pull up to the diesel pump at the truck stop. So I'd get all the big rigs around. And it was it was a pretty neat experience. So I've, I've always been fond of the, of the K5. It was, uh, it was neat. Had the spare tire in the inside, I think, on that one. Kind of like the Suburbans had, if I remember right. But I remember crawling all around there at the diesel pumps at the truck stop. I know exactly where we were, what pump it was. I don't know if that station's still there or not. But childhood memories. <laughs> but this truck's pretty well set. Like I said, I, I would like to find a back seat for it. Uh, I know there's some 3D printed options out there. Um, I had a, the one in my yellow blazer I did. It was a uh, resin cast I got on eBay when these bodies first came out. It's awesome. And I quit making them shortly after I got one. But... I know there's some 3D printed options available, so I may look into that. I want to do it red to match the door panels, so it's like they just kind of piece together an interior. Um, we got the red dice to match the red door panels. Kind of a hodgepodge. I got those metal wipers, which I think are a really nice addition up here. Um, they don't fit this body very well at all, but they sure do look realistic. I think about the best feature on this truck is the Element tire and wheel. These are just the standard Element wheels. I think they came off the Trailwalker. Um, these are general grabbers. Um, they fit this body perfect. The offset is perfect. They look like 15 by 10s with some 35s on it. Um, I dig it a lot. A lot of people commented on that. It's just the right offset. You know, that's, it's hard. RC4 Drive designed this chassis for the Toyota. And then they've done so much with the Toyota. And then they threw this body on it. It's quite a bit wider. So there's not, they have some deeper dish wheels, but they just don't, I don't know. They're not quite right. The lips are too big. Um, the wheels are too big. I think that a lot of the deep dish ones are 1.9. Yeah, and I think this, this 155 looks perfect on here. Um, I did add a while ago some scale hubs. I think those are locked up RC. Um, they look more like a Chevy style. <laughs> I didn't want to put the Warns on there. Every pair of the Warn lock, locking hubs I've put on a rig have broken. So I don't, I don't use those a whole lot. But the Toyotas all have the uh, Toyota A's and hubs, so... Figured we needed an American style one for this rig. So if you're looking to give this a try, I didn't measure anything, of course. I just I had a water bottle with some water in it and I cut it off and filled it up with Elmer's glue. Not filled it up, but I put quite a bit in there and just stirred it around and add a little bit more water later. And I think it's still a little bit too thick. So you can kind of gauge the consistency. When me and Jeremy were, I was helping him with his, he, uh, Got it just about the consistency of milk. So he was stirring it and it would make big bubbles like milk does when you blow bubbles in it. And I think this is still a little thick to do that. I tried, I didn't really give myself the right cup to really shake this up like it needed to be. And it does separate pretty quick. You can see there's a lot of glue in the bottom. So I think a little bit more watery, make it a little bit easier. But definitely if you try it, you know, figure, find you a little spot to try it on. Don't go the whole rig right out of the gate because, um, you can wipe it off, but it's not going to come completely off. So don't don't fully commit till you've tested it. But yeah, that's my experiment for the night. So I appreciate you guys watching. I look forward to getting out to USTE and driving this thing around and seeing what everybody else has built. So get out there and do something with a hobby. Keep it scale, and I'll see y'all next time.